get an internet. It's serious video time. I have a script here and everything. Um, yeah. Apologize if I seem a little out of it. I'm actually really sore at the moment. I used arm muscles today and I'm not, my arms are, uh, I, that's another video. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you about a series of videos that I'm going to be starting called the Labels series. That's what I'm calling it at least. It's going to have a bunch of parts. Uh, I know of at least three other parts beyond this one. And this is the type of thing that I may end up doing quite a bit in the future as well. This might be something that I do for years to come. It might be something that I go, eh, nobody's really interested in this. I'm just going to stop. I don't know yet. One of the things I've been asked, uh, mostly recently by Candace, but I've been asked by my partner. I've been asked by a lot of my friends. Um, it's how I formulate thoughts about being in a position of privilege. I mean, for all society views me as, well, I'm quite privileged, actually. Uh, I'm a white middle-class guy living in a relatively nice place in the United States, living below my means even, so I, I do fairly well for myself, and I don't show any signs about being a part of the other, the thing that the United States and much, if not all, of the world, but I can't speak for them, um, fears the most. It's the other, the people that don't fit in. And I don't fit in quite a bit, but I appear to. Like, random person on the street wouldn't realize that I don't fit in. I'm not one of them, so to speak. In this series of videos, I'm going to be talking about how I view privilege, how I grew up, and um, kind of a historic for me viewpoint on these types of things, how I've learned over time, how I've adjusted my language, adjusted my reaction to things and so on. Uh, this is going to include things such as sexuality, gender, uh, ethnicity, physical appearance, wealth, and a few other things, depending on how long this series goes for. I'm going to be putting it into a specific context. Uh, the framing that I'm using is the label. And I should probably talk about that, but one thing I should note. I'm far from an authoritative source on these types of things. In fact, I'm not authoritative on much of anything related to the subject other than my own personal experiences. This means I'm going to mess things up. I'm going to say things incorrectly. And that's one of the reasons why I've been so hesitant about doing this series. But... If I do mess up, tell me. I will apologize, correct what I've messed up, and make sure that I don't do it again. It's the best that I know how to do. And I'm going to be actively researching a lot of the stickier parts of these topics. This video is not particularly controversial as far as I know. So yeah, let's start with that context. When I was eight years old, my mother told me that I was going to be taking a very important test. And it was a test that I wasn't allowed to study for or anything. And the way she explained why I needed to take this test and what it would actually mean is by using the analogy of labels. Labels are words that people put on other things in this world, whether that be themselves, other people, kitties, rocks. It doesn't matter. It's just other objects inside of this world. We attach words to them. Some labels are positive. This person is kind. This kitty is cute. Some labels are negative. Um, the whole concept of evil is a great example of a negative label. Some labels are subjective. The same person could have one person label them as kind and another person label them as evil. And from each of their viewpoints, they are accurate, as far as they know at least. Some labels are neutral in some lights, and positive or negative in other lights. This shirt is black. If I like black, black shirts, that's a positive thing. If I particularly dislike black shirts, that's a negative thing. And if I don't particularly care, it's fairly neutral, right? Most people have a variety of labels attached to them, both positive and negative, along with neutral, innocuous, and offensive. These are all simple examples of labels, and this is how it was explained to me as an eight-year-old kid. So this is a very simplistic analogy, but 
bear with me. It'll start making sense with more of these videos. At the time, my mom explained that I had some of these labels. For instance, I had the label of boy, which was the word that my mother used to describe me when I was eight years old. Some people react differently to that label than other people. That's kind of the way the world works, is that everybody has a different connotation to any word that is used as a label. This gets really complicated fast, but hopefully this is starting to make a little bit of sense. To me, this was a really good analogy, because I was starting to notice all of the inequalities in society. You're talking, she was talking to a kid who had worried themselves sick over the fact that my family didn't have enough money to do various things, uh, because I grew up poor. And I'll get more in that on the wealth video. But I had worried, quite literally worried myself sick. I was vomiting on a daily basis over that type of thing. And the idea was that society had placed a label upon myself and my family that it being poor. Does that kind of see how eight-year-old me might have done that? It also allowed me to sort of focus less on the label itself and more on who's putting the label on those people. For instance, my mother may call me a sweet kid, that's one thing, but another random stranger I may have helped calling me a sweet kid, that would be a much better label, even though it's the literal same words attached to it. It depends on who gives those labels as to what I would care about them, for instance. This is effectively when I started grokking the concept of context, because, yeah, somebody saying calling me a sweet kid is one thing, somebody go, yeah, you're a sweet kid, all right, is a different thing, and a random person going, oh, you're such a sweet kid, or oh, you're such a sweet kid. All of these different tonal voices, whether they're literal voices or the way I'm interpreting people's writing or anything like, or their actions, those all had different contexts. And this was the age that I started picking up on a lot of those things. Unfortunately, Part of this was me discovering how hard it was to remove a label somebody else has given you, especially if they're relatively influential. Ethnic and gender labels tend to fall under these categories, and depending on the context, they may be considered positive, negative, or otherwise, just like all other labels. So as a result, if you yourself, you yourself doesn't, if you yourself do not agree with that label, it's not necessarily a good thing that you got that label, regardless of what other people may think. Make sense? This entire concept is what I call label theory. It's, again, it's a framing context for how I viewed the world as a kid, and it still influences me today. Uh, there's a reason why I'm so hesitant and reluctant to give people labels. It's because labels have power, and certain labels have much more power than other labels. It also depends on who is doing the labeling and whether they're, say, for instance, if somebody was looking up to me and I gave them a label, that label makes way more of a difference than it's somebody who never has ever associated with me. They would be far less likely to care about the label, and that makes sense. The same thing happens in reverse. Other people giving me labels, if it's somebody that I care about their opinion of, that label makes, more, makes a bigger impact on me. Alternately, if it's somebody who has power over many other people giving me a label, that also has a bigger impact on me. And I'm sure other people have a similar theory. This is just the way I think of it, the way I see the world, so to speak. The conversation that my mom put this in, though, wasn't meant to be world building. It wasn't meant to be earth shattering or anything like that. It was to calm me down about a test that I wasn't allowed to study for. To me, at the time, that label that resulted from that test meant I couldn't be at school with my friends anymore that I was forever put into a group of individuals that did not match my socioeconomic status. Uh, they were in a significantly higher socioeconomic tier than what I was used to, and that meant that I constantly had to deal with envy, because all of my friends had things that I didn't, because my family couldn't afford it. Um, to my mother, that label meant that we had to move because otherwise her kid would be going to a school that was painted like a prison sitting in one of the worst neighborhoods of the city that we lived in at the time. My mom would forever have to deal with the burdens of having a kid who has so much socioeconomic anxiety that it started causing major illnesses throughout my life. 
I still have those illnesses, for that matter, and I'm not in that situation anymore. They're permanent. These are the, this is the power of a label given by somebody who is either influential with you or influential with others. And this was a label that was given by somebody who was influential with others. These weren't positive results, even though the label I received on the surface would be considered positive. So yeah, because of that experience, that's the way I started looking at a lot of things, everything in fact. So. Keep that in mind when I go through the next set of videos in the label series. Um, when I talk about sexuality, when I talk about gender, when I talk about anything else, this is the context that I'm looking at everything in. It's what I was looking at things in when I was a young kid. It's what I'm looking at things in now. Hopefully this has been enlightening, Internet, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.